That's right, Joe Guangyu is confirmed to be staying on the Formula 1 grid for the 2024 season alongside Valtteri Bottas. This is a good decision from the team, and I'm very happy for Joe Guangyu, but it does make me wonder about the plan moving forward, especially looking ahead to 2026 and Audi coming in. So let's look at the positives, the negatives, and the other options that Audi and Sauber might have had. This is the news that Sauber have announced Joe Guanyu will be staying with the team as they transition from Alfa Romeo to Sauber next year, with Aluni Bravi saying Joe has made impressive steps forward in the last two years, and we expect him to continue his trajectory in 2024. And it does look like this contract is only for the 2024 season, so we're going to have this whole debacle again as we prepare for the 2025 season in a year's time. But for now, Joe Guanyu is going to stay with the team, and I think that's actually a really good decision. Joe is one of the quieter drivers on the grid and has very minimal controversy around him. He came in as a rookie on his own, so he didn't have that direct comparison to other rookies and kind of went under the radar last season. But this season, I can say he definitely does look a more complete driver. Like sometimes in Formula One, if nobody is talking about you, that's kind of a positive. I mean, Logan Sargent, Nick DeVries, they probably didn't want to be talked about as much as they have been over the course of this year. But it seems like his excellent mentality has meant that he's respected within the team, not only for his hard work, but also for his intelligence as well. And he deals with his race engineers and team incredibly well and stays positive. Like last season in particular, the car was dreadful in terms of its reliability. Often Zhou Guangyu was dropping out of races, but he kept positive and he kept pushing the team forwards, which I think is a great asset to have. On top of that, I think it's fair to say that it hasn't been the easiest year in the Alfa Romeo car. They are still ninth in the constructor standings right now, but Joe has shown that he is quick, especially when stacked up against Valtteri Bottas, who, remember, when he was back in the Mercedes car, was seen as one of the best qualifiers on the grid. I know that Bottas is still ahead 9-5 to five in terms of that qualifying head-to-head, -head, but Joe has shown glimpses that he is getting better and better, especially in those slow speed corners. He's very much catching up to Valtteri Bottas's quality there. And he was one of the only drivers not to get done for track limits in Austria as well. So he had, he is slowly showing that he's getting better and better at that race craft. And in particular, Spain is the one that comes to me. Like the fact that he was battling with Yuki Tsunoda and it was probably one of the best battles that we've seen from anybody all season, placing his car in a position where he lured Yuki Tsunoda into forcing him off the track. Tsunoda then gets a penalty and Joe takes home the points and it was probably his best points finish of the five points finishes that we've seen in his Formula One career and he reacted really well not to get into a collision there. I feel like other drivers, they would have lured the other driver in, but then also got themselves into a little bit of a mess with a collision, maybe taking themselves out of the race. Joe Guanyu doesn't do that. And often it's that consistency, which is really nice to see. He's such a reliable driver and in racing situations, barely ever makes big errors. Again, if you compare it to the other rookies that have come in recently, Latifi, Mazepin, Schumacher, De Vries, they all had this characteristic where they they were just binning the car off every single time they were on track, whereas he doesn't really seem to get caught up in accidents. And if he does, it's usually not his fault or it's a genuine racing incident. The only ones that come to mind and OK, they have happened fairly recently. I think Hungary, you know, this season is the glaring error, but it came after the car didn't start in the way that you wanted to. There was a lot of pressure on him because he put in a stunning qualifying performance to start at P5 in Hungary. And then also there was Zamvort where he did go into the wall, but somebody was going to go into the wall because it was so wet on the track at that point. And whilst we talk about the positives, it would be silly not to bring up the fact that he does have massive commercial value and not only from him, but also bringing in other sponsorships too. He's attracting a lot of interest from companies that are keen to break into this Chinese market. And he's Formula One's first Chinese driver and has brought a lot of attention to the sport from Chinese companies. And before the Audi money comes directly into the team come 2026, Sauber is still going to be one of those teams that barely gets towards the cost cap. So the fact that they do have this financial backing and somebody who can bring in this commercial success as well is really exciting for the team moving forwards. In my opinion, all of that stacks up to him being more than worthy of his Formula 1 seat. He's quick enough, he has the right mindset, and he doesn't smash the car up. You can't really ask for much more, especially when you're a back-of-the-pack kind of team that Alfa Romeo have been in the last couple of seasons, with a few flashes of brilliance here and there, but the car itself hasn't quite been to the level that they've really wanted it to be. He is in that bracket of driver, and I think he's proved himself good enough to be in Formula 1, but not quite at the top. He's good, but he's not like 
good, if you know what I mean. He's not of that level of maybe Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, etc., etc. Those kind of younger drivers that are really going to reach the heights in Formula One. I don't think he's going to be there, but I think he will have a really solid career in Formula One if given the opportunity, which makes me wonder... Was there anyone that Sauber could have gambled on that maybe would have been a little bit more exciting? I think the first driver that comes to mind for everybody would be Theo Porcher, who will remain with the Sauber setup come 2024. He will remain their reserve driver, so he's also doing that transition from Alfa Romeo to Sauber with the team. The 20-year-old is currently competing in Formula 2 with ART and is leading the championship by 25 points, with I think around 39 points left to go in the season. So looking very likely that he's going to win the Formula 2 championship, and therefore he can't take part in the Formula 2 championship again. So I thought Sauber might want to get him into the team after winning that championship but instead I think they're going to go down the line of having him have a full year as a reserve driver be around the team as much as he possibly can be and then come 2025 maybe that's the time to get Theo Porcher into the team another driver that was heavily linked was Mick Schumacher obviously he's with the Mercedes team this year as their reserve driver and is absolutely loved by Toto Wolff Toto Wolff can't talk highly enough of Mick Schumacher and is trying to get him a seat somewhere obviously he also fits that German driver protocol that Audi he might be looking for once they come into the team but Joe has the advantage of being less error prone for me unfortunately Schumacher is going to have that tag after his time at Haas and especially the fact that Gunther Steiner constantly went on about the fact that he kept causing too much damage to the car that they couldn't really afford to keep it and unfortunately Alfa Romeo until that big money comes in in a couple of years time will still be on the periphery of the budget cap right now so Mick Schumacher would they have wanted the driver to come in who's maybe got a higher ceiling than Joe Guan Yu but probably would cause more damage to the car it's a very difficult call to make I'd love to know what you think would Joe or Mick be a better driver for Alfa Romeo slash Sauber moving forwards and then the third driver that's also linked is Carlos Sainz. He's said to be the driver that Audi want to build their project around in the future. He could have made that move early, go into the Sauber team for 2024 and show exactly what he wants, gets everything in line for 2026 when Audi do eventually come in. But I feel like a move away from Ferrari right now, even though he is the second driver to Charles Leclerc a lot of the time, and he would be the team number one at Sauber, you would imagine. It feels a little bit too early still. Obviously, Ferrari would still be able to give him the opportunity at podiums and possibly wins next year as well we know that there's a lot of hype around the Ferrari 2024 car and it makes sense for Carlos Sainz to at least see out that contract with Ferrari and then come 2025 when that contract expires maybe he makes the move over just a year before Audi come in although Joe isn't the most exciting driver out there I'm really happy to see him stay it's difficult to know his future obviously with Audi coming in will they keep Joe will they keep Bottas will they keep either of them we don't really know and I feel like both of them will be replaced, obviously, over the next three or four years. But whether Zhou Guangyu can hold on to that seat for the foreseeable future, I'd like to see what happens. But let me know what you think. Is Zhou Guangyu worthy of this seat come 2024? And how long can you actually see him staying in Formula One? Will he be able to prove himself worthy enough and maybe move to another team that's also lower down the grid? Can you see him maybe propelling himself forward? We know that third year in Formula One is usually the one where people take a big step forward. Maybe next year is the year that he shows he is actually the quality where he can jump up to a bigger team in the future. I'd love to know what you think. And if you want to know my predictions for this weekend in Singapore, I also made this video here. So click that link and I'll see you over there.